he is required to do. Because again, at the beginning of the game, I told you, these compositions, it's going to be a constant push and pull between the both of them. They're both baiting each other out. But the beauty of this Fulvius is that I could make a mistake and I press one button and I basically buy myself 0.5 seconds worth of time every single time he taps that ult. And then he can effectively do it as many times as he wants to because he has Edoc as a way to bail him out of tough spots. So it's interesting because for me, I thought maybe maybe he was going to go. If he had full faith in Edoc, he would have taken a vengeance. But with the flicker, it makes him very flexible, but it also could potentially punish the Natan. You take the Entropy, goes all the way to the back line. You flicker, passive, uh, passive mark him, and then instantly initiate. And again, you mentioned initiate. Without Dyron here, multiple fights. There's no point of initiation without the Bobius, right? You have the Matilda that can't really initiate. You have these, you're just there to cover. You've got Skylar who will protect his position. Darwin was the sole potential initiator in this game, and he played that to a T. Um, it does seem like TLID, they, they got ahead of themselves. They weren't really ready in this position. And they took the fight, which cost them the game. Which is why I think what Gideon said was very important, right? He mentioned that Technically, RRQ don't really necessarily need the tools to initiate. Yeah. All they needed to do was work around and trust that TLID are a team at the moment that can't hold themselves back, right? Mm -hmm. There were so many moments that they were so behind. They didn't have the unnecessary uh, skills available, equipment available, uh, the gold available, the items available, and yet they still wanted to go in for these engages. And RRQ, they were very happy to just uh, get and receive it on a silver platter. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, overall, Skylar, the fact that he was able to find kills in his lane, I, I, would I say it's an outplay? Maybe maybe the first one was the outplay. The second one, probably not. It was The onus was definitely on Aaron Cheeky, and all the kills afterward definitely were Skylar. He's ending this game 11, 2, and 5. Maniac, by the way. Maniac, Maniac. skipped his boots, went straight into the Haas Claw, and played purely off of the timing of his sprint, which is, again, very bold of him, right? Not everybody is comfortable doing this as well. But in that mindset, right, because your scaling hero has already kind of caught up very fast to the item power spikes of everybody else, like uh, Dyrem, for example, when he got just the Thunderbelt alone, you could just see if people are focusing on that Bovius, Irithel gets a free access into that backline. And honestly, if I'm in TLID's position, I'm thinking that by the fifth, sixth minute, our two biggest problems is Bovius as well as this Bane on Sunsuji. For game number two, presented by the official tournament smartphone Samsung Galaxy S24 FE. We, we talked about Iraq, we talked about Skylar, but let's talk about Dyron now, as he's able to claim this title for our second game. What did he do to deserve this title? Get his hands on Fovius. It's just yeah. so good for what...